you're asking is actually pretty easily achieved by using some simple if statements um, in Twine. And I think that in a lot of games, it's quite common to show the character codex once you've sort of met all the characters in the game. Quite often, I think you meet all the characters at once because they're in a group or something. But from your ask, I'm getting that you want to display each character's stats or the character codex for each character as you meet them in the story. So if you meet characters kind of spread out in the story, you would want to show them as you meet them. I thought I would just show you how to do both because I'm not entirely sure which one you think of, but it's basically the same logic. So. I'm just going to show you how to do both to kind of show you the difference. But first of all, I thought I would just kind of show you what if statements are and kind of explain that for those of you that, that don't quite understand how that works, because it's a very important part in creating Twine games. So understanding the logic of an if statement is going to be really important for creating games because you're going to use it a lot throughout the story. So, so you can just skip over this part if you feel like you already know what an if statement does and just move on to how to do the exact thing. But for those of you who are interested, an if statement generally looks like this. If this something is true, do this thing and done. So what you're checking is whether this statement is true and if that is the case, only then do you run whatever code or display whatever content is within these two tags right here. You can also do uh, another statement and check if something else is true with this else if statement. So if this other thing is true, do this instead. Now you're checking two different kind of statements and you can also say if none of these two things are true do this third thing so this is basically an if statement with all kind of the available functions or methods so there's a lot of things that you can do with this and it's a very simple logic that is incredibly powerful in a game like this. But let's just move straight into how you can achieve displaying the character codex as you meet characters throughout the story. So I'm going to use this template that I have. As of right now, it's the beginning of the story, so you haven't met any characters yet. There is a relationships page right here, which is the character codex, but it is currently empty. So I have these three passages. This is the start of the story. In the second passage, we're going to meet the first character. In this case, it's going to be meeting Isabel. And in the third passage, we're going to meet the second character, which in this case is going to be Richard. Now, I want to make sure that when I meet Isabel, Isabel's information is going to be available in the character codex which is this relationships passage right here and then subsequently when i meet richard i want his content to become available in here so basically what we need to do for this is to uh, use a very simple if statement we only really need this part of it and we're going to check if we have met isabel is true and then we're gonna put her information inside of this. That's basically the logic of this. So how do we know if we have met Isabel in the story? For that, we're gonna use a variable that we're gonna create. Let's just call it have met Isabel. So then we're gonna say if we have met Isabel is true, display her content. But we obviously don't want this to be true until we actually meet Isabel in the story in the game. So we're going to use this passage right here, which is called Sore in it. This is a special passage from Twine that allows you to set up variables at the beginning of your story. So if you have any variables that you need to be kind of already set and in place at the beginning of your story, you would put them in here. Now, this passage is something that you need to create on your own. Just create a new passage and name it exactly this 
and it will work the way that it should. So what we're going to do is create a variable at the beginning of the story that says have met Isabel and set it to false. Set it to false because we haven't met Isabel yet. We're also going to do the same for Richard. We're going to say have we met Richard yet? No. You can also use the to to set variables. It does the exact same thing. I'm just used to this way of doing things in coding. So now that this story knows that we haven't met either of these characters yet at the beginning of the story, we're going to go to our actual story and go to the passage where we meet the first character, in this case, Isabel. And we're going to say, we're going to set the have met Isabel variable to true because we have actually met her now and we want the game to know that in the passage where we meet richard we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to set his variable to true because now we've actually met so now that those two things are in place we need to make sure in the character codex passage which in my case is this relationships passage that the content for each character is not visible until we've met them. So I'm going to get Isabel's information, which is this whole bunch of code right here. <laughs> just copy it and go into my character codec passage. And then I'm just going to wrap that content in the same if statement that we used before. I'm going to say if have met Isabel is true, then I'm going to show this content right here. So everything inside of these two tags right here is going to be displayed when this condition is true. You can also say is true for this particular part. And then I'm going to go and get Richard's content, copy that, and do the exact same thing for him with another if statement underneath. So if have met Richard is true, show this content. I can also use this to do the same thing. So now when I try to play my game, you can see this in place. So right now it's the beginning of the story. We haven't met anyone yet. If we go to relationships, it will be empty. But if we go to the passage where we meet Isabel, look, we've met Isabel. She is now available in the character codex right here. Then we can go to the next passage and meet Richard. And lo and behold, Richard has been added to the character codex. So it's a pretty simple logic by using the if statements. The other way that I was talking about in the beginning, if you wanted the character codex to only become available with all the content once you've met all the characters, you can simply use one single variable in the story in it that says have met characters for example and then you can remove this one because you don't need to know if you met Isabel you really just need to know if you've met the last character so we're gonna say have met characters to true once we meet Richard because he's the last character that we want to meet and in this case you can either make sure that all the contents that you want to show inside of the character codex passage becomes available only when you have met all the characters same as we did before or alternatively you can actually say that you don't want this link to appear in your game until you've met all the characters. In that case, you would have to go to wherever you keep your link. And for me, that is inside of this story menu passage right here. And then you would just wrap the link to the character codex page in an if statement that says have met characters is true. Only when that statement is true will this link become available in the game. Now in this case, you really don't need to wrap these character codex cards inside of an if statement because this entire passage won't become available until you have met everyone. So you can just drop these if statements if you like. Now, when you go to your game, there's no link to the relationship page yet. But once you meet all the characters, 
that link becomes available and all the information is already in there. So those are two different ways of doing exactly the same thing, basically. Your other question was how can you notify the user that something has just happened? Like in this example, the relationships passage has now become available to the player. And to do this, you would probably use this custom macro by Chapel. So you would go to this website right here and you'd find the notify macro. Click on that and all you really need to use this macro is copy some JavaScript code and some CSS code. So first of all, we're gonna do the JavaScript code. You can find that here. You can either do the minified JavaScript or the pretty JavaScript. The only difference between the two is that the minified version, it's been like smushed together. So it takes up less space in the code. The alternative is to keep it like this which is very tidy and very easy to understand but you're not going to want to change anything in this code so I would just suggest getting the minified version so you're just going to copy that go to your game and go to your JavaScript I would suggest putting this at the very bottom as you can see I already have this in place this is the code in the pretty version but you could just paste in the code that you just copied the minified version and just leave it like that it will now work the way that it should. With this macro, you also need to copy some basic um, CSS. So you can find that in a pretty version or in a minified version. I would probably go with the pretty one for this. You're just gonna copy that, go to your game and go to the style sheet and paste it in somewhere inside of here. Just make sure that you're not wrapping it like inside of another. Keep it outside maybe under the body tag or something kind of like that now that all of that is in place the only thing you really need is to use this macro right here let's copy that and in the passage where you want the alert or the notification to pop up for the user in our case we want that to be inside of this passage where we've met all the characters you're just gonna paste in this macro right here and in between the tags we're gonna write whatever we want the alert to say I'm gonna say relationships unlocked and over here you can decide if you want an extra delay on the alert so you can decide if you want it to be shown for longer than two seconds which is the default i'm gonna set it to three seconds because i want the user to be able to read it before it disappears you can also give it an extra class if you want to style it differently like maybe you want a red alert for something scary or dangerous and you want a green alert for something that's good whatever you want you can put an extra class in here i don't really need that so i'm just going to leave it like this and that's basically it when we play the game now we can see the notification pop up the second that we meet richard there it is so it's very easy to use that's really all you have to do and you can use it as many times as you want just use the same kind of syntax the same macro and paste it into whatever passage that you want an alert to be so that's basically it i really hope that explained everything to you i hope it was understandable and that you kind of understood the logic behind the if statement that you're going to be using a lot in the game so really hope that helped So here's a tiny little sneak peek at one of the templates that I'm working on at the moment. It looks kind of like this. I really like this color combination though I realize that it is quite cutesy in a way, but I like it. Here's the buttons and some link choices. There's a menu right here with some links to the main character some stats, there's a character codex page. I'm not sure if I want to do like the background on these elements. It's It might be a little bit too much actually. <laughs> we'll see. I've also tried it out in a couple other color combinations just to see how that would look like for other people. So this is a very Ravenclaw <laughs> inspired color combination i think it works pretty well too i haven't changed these to yellow i don't know if i would do yellow or white or maybe a combination i'm not sure but she's cute i think she's cute right 
and here she is in a orange warm toned yellow sort of a theme I think this looks good too very royal in a way love it love it love it So I think there's a lot of options for this template, so let me know if you like it and you would like to see it published. Mm -hmm.